never lose its power. Amen. So turn with me this morning, if you will, this morning to the Psalm 37, and I'm going to pray. I'm going to get right into the Word. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Father, I thank you for your Word. I give you the praise, O God, that your Word is anointed. And I thank you that the carrier of your Word is anointed. I give you the thanks, O God, that your Word will bypass the minds of the people and go into their spirits, O God, as you have prepared the way. Your amazing grace has never failed us. And Father, thank you. Thank you for this day you have given us. Thank you for all of your blessings. And I ask now, Lord, that you will minister to your precious people. In Jesus' name, amen. And God's people said amen. 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 The title of my uh, message again this morning is Attitude may be a little thing, but it makes a big difference. Amen? And today I want to talk to you about an attitude of resting and being patient. So Psalm 37, we're going to read verses 1 through 7 in the Amplified. I'm sorry, did I say 37? Yes, um, I'm reading from Amplified Version 1 through 7. Fret not yourself because of evildoers, Neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness, that which is not that which is not upright or in right standing with God. For they shall soon be cut off like the grass, grass and wither as the green herb. Trust, rely on, lean on, and be confident in the Lord. Here we're talking about attitude, an attitude of trusting. Sometimes that can be difficult, beloved. But we'll, we'll see these things as we go on today. Trust, lean on, rely on, be confident in the Lord, and, the, and do good. So shall you dwell in the land and feed surely on His faithfulness, and truly you shall be fed. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires, and watch this, secret petitions of your heart. Only God knows the secret petitions. Commit your way to the Lord. Roll and repose each care of your load on Him. Trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident also in Him, and He will bring it to pass. And He will make your uprighteousness and right standing with God go forth as the light and your justice and right as the shining sun of the noonday. And verse 7 is what I want to concentrate on today because this is a verse of Scripture that God's always reminding me of, and I wonder how many in here today can say the same thing. Be still. Be still, beloved. Be still and rest in the Lord. Wait for Him and patiently Lean yourself upon him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. So I'm not going to go any further. I just want to share again. Be still and rest in the Lord and wait for him. Sometimes we don't know how to wait for the Lord, beloved, because the truth is we are so, so busy. Is there anyone here? We're so busy. I said this last week, but it's worth repeating. The greatest day of your life and mine is when we take total responsibility for our attitudes. That's the day we truly grow up. When we stop blaming this one and that one and the next one, and we take a good long look in the mirror and say, I'm the man, Lord. I'm the man. King David said it this way, search me, O God. Search me and see if there be any wicked way in me. That's the humble attitude that King David lived with. He lived with an attitude of gratitude and humbleness. If you study his life, you will see that that was why God said about him, he is a man after my own heart. Because he was a humble man. As much as he owned and as far as his eye could see every day, it didn't faze him one bit. He went before his God. 
And when he did fail, he went quickly and got it set for one time with Bathsheba. But that's okay. When the prophet came to him, he listened. So we learn from King David's life. We learn from all of the great patriots of the Bible. There's always something you can learn. When you've stopped learning, beloved, you've stopped living. It's just that tr that's that truth. That is the truth. You have to keep learning. You have to keep moving. So the Bible here says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Plain and simple, be still and be patient. Now, I know for some of you, you're sitting there saying, oh, you just don't know, Pastor. I do know. I do know. I don't get answers to prayer like this every time I pray. Sometimes I'm praying for things for weeks, sometimes for months, and I've been praying for things for years that I haven't seen yet. But the one thing that I know that I was at the back of the line when God was giving out all the gifts was for, for patience. I know I'm not talking to anybody else in here, but it's the truth. Am I talking to you, Joe? You having patience? Perfe yeah. He said he will perfect that thing which concerneth you. Amen? But I'm always saying to the Lord, Lord, why am I so short in patience? And he says, because you're way down the road long before I tell you to go down the road. Anybody can relate to that. But your attitude may be a little thing, beloved, but it makes a huge, big difference in your life. It's good to laugh at yourself because most of us take life way too seriously. You've only got a short span here. You may as well enjoy it. So patience is something we can all stand to have more of, especially the one that's talking. We just don't want the tribulations that come along with it. If you're going to strive for patience, it's going to come with a price. You'll be tried and tested during that process of acquiring patience. You'll be tried. The Bible says it's the, the enemy wants your faith. He wants your faith and your patience. He wants to get you to the place where you get discouraged and you get down and you think you're, you're, you're isolated. You think you're the only one that's going through this. Everybody else's children are getting saved. Everybody else has found a husband, found a wife. Everybody else is prospering. Oh, woe be unto me. I'm the only one. Like Elijah under the juniper tree. Oh, God, why don't you just kill me and get it over? But he just had a huge victory. This can happen to all of us, beloved. But through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. Patience counteracts anger. I'm going to say that again. Patience counteracts anger. When you can hold your tongue, you're getting some place in God. But I remember hearing that as a child. And I'll say it in Scottish and translate it. Had your wished. I know you looked at me, what? Had your wished. Hold your tongue. And my father was a brilliant man saying, he used to say all these things to us all the time. Hold your tongue. A shut mouth catches no flies. Little sayings that... All these years later, did that man ever imagine I'd be speaking his words to a congregation in the United States and through only, God only knows how many people watch by YouTube. Can you see your destiny? Can you see God is real? Yes, he is. And so patience will counteract anger, will keep your tongue in your mouth. Patience will keep you content. When we are patient, we are able to focus on God's plan for our life rather than pushing through our own efforts. Too often we try to open locked doors because of our impatience. I know I've done it. And every time I pushed that door open, I fell flat in my face. And then I would get up and God would say, Hallelujah, you'll learn. But isn't it a learning process? Isn't life a learning process? That child has to fall a few times before it gets its, its footing. Same thing with you and I spiritually. We make our mistakes. 
we go to God and we say, you know, Lord, I miss you. And you, I miss this. I really miss you. And the Lord will t- t- turn around to you and say, it's okay. I know where you live. I know all about you. I knew you were going to make the mistake before you did, but I'll let you do it anyhow so that you can learn. Oh, it's a great blessing to be able to learn from your mistakes. It truly is. To be able to say, you know what, Lord? I truly messed up. Forgive me, and it will not happen again. I've learned a lesson. I've learned some things over the years, beloved. Our attitude will soon go south when we keep blaming other people for our own impatience, well, and for especially God. We do it all the time. Why, God? Why? How come I? How come? I was believing you for that fur coat, and she got it. I remember that story from Joyce Myers many years ago. That was one of her stories. It just came to my heart as I was saying it. She was believing God for a fur coat, and this woman walks in with the fur coat she wanted. But she was mature enough in the Lord to say it belongs to her, not me. <laughs> so our attitude when we, when we keep, it's, when it's always us four and no more, and it's all about me and me, 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 it's a horrible attitude to have, beloved. You need to have an attitude of gratitude for everything you have and thank God for every moment of every day because you don't have tomorrow. You've only got today. So when you don't do this, your attitude will soon go south and you'll blame everyone and everything but yourself. You see, if God's timetable isn't matching up with ours, What we do is we try and take matters into our own hands. And when we do this, we inevitably, everybody say inevitably, Inevitably. end up failing because we're focusing on our will and not His. This is why the Scripture says, be still and know that I am God. Don't think I'm God. Know I'm God. But there's the, there's the key. Be still. Be still. We can't hear God for all the other chatter, 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 chatter. I mean, and I'm as guilty as anyone in here. If it's not Facebook, well, I'm not on Facebook, but if, you, if, if it's not texting, it's emailing. If it's not emailing, it's talking on the phone. If it's not that, it's television. I mean, come on, we all have these things. But there comes a time in every Christian's life, when you need answers, beloved, and there's people in this church right now, God spoke this to me in the way here, that needs this message, and you need to forget who's delivering it. Just hear the word of the Lord. You have need of patience that you might fulfill that promise that God has given to you. Patience. But you need to know to hear his voice Get alone with God. Well, pastor, you just don't know. I mean, I've got a full-time job. I've got children. I've got grandchildren. And we could go on and on and on. Make the time or you'll never have the time. Even if it's only 15 minutes in the morning laying in your bed talking to God. I'll be perfectly honest with you. That's the time I enjoy more than anything. I'm still in that nice kind of sleepy mode. You know what I'm talking about? And it's just, good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Father. I love that, Pastor Joe. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I've adopted that. I like that. And, and I just talk to the Lord for a wee while before I even get up. And I just thank him for that day. I just say, thank you, Father, for my health. Thank you for this day. Thank you for those that you will, you will have me minister to this day. Thank you for the Holy Spirit ministering to me. Thank you for me hearing your voice before I even hear it. Be still. Be still. So stop focusing on your own will and start to focus on God's will when you hear it. This verse is a good reminder not to get frustrated in the slow times, but to wait on God. You know, when you go into an airplane, you, many of you have been on an airplane, and the captain usually comes on and says to sit back and enjoy the journey or enjoy the flight. If there's anything we can do for you, just press the button. Well, you know, the same is true with patience. 
Sit back and enjoy your life. Sit back and enjoy your life. You've only got one. You've only got one life. Let me tell you something. I've learned something. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I refuse to be stressed. I mean, I have my moments. Don't misunderstand me. But I refuse to stay in that. There's the key. We all can be tempted to be stressed and bad-tempered, lose our temper, want to make an impression on the wall with somebody and tell God it's an accident. You know what I'm talking about. We have all been there. But I'm talking about staying there. That's the difference. You choose every day the attitude you're going to have. You choose whether you're going to be happy or sad or miserable and everybody else around you miserable. You ever been around people you think you're walking on eggs? If you, ever, you know, you walk into your, your place of employment, whether it's a factory, an office, or wherever, and you know, you say good morning, and people say good morning, and there's always one, always one that just sits there, you know? Don't you want to go right up to them and say, good morning? <laughs> it's all in your attitude. And you know, when you have that bad attitude, it spreads. That attitude of, it's never enough, it will spread. That attitude of being miserable all the time. And again, I repeat, it's, I'm not talking about an occasion. We all are doing that. We, all of us were human. But if it's a constant, 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 nothing's ever enough, nothing's right, I'm miserable, this, da, 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 it just spreads. It spreads through your family. It spreads through your neighborhood. It spreads through your workplace. It spreads through your church. Sure, we don't do everything perfect, but we're trying. Can we get a little bit of a amen? amen? We're trying. I've got many plans coming, but it's what I'm teaching you today. I'm hearing. It's all in God's time. It's walk patiently. It's coming. It's coming. All the plans we have, all the programs, quote, unquote, but they have to be anointed by the Holy Ghost. And it has to be God's time. Trust me, there are things going on behind the scenes in this church that would absolutely amaze you what's coming. I don't want to get up here ahead of time. But you'll hear it someday. And you will say, boy, I'm glad I waited for that. So many good things, things that God has spoken to my heart. And, and I'll be honest with you, I would have did it yesterday, but God has not released me. So sit back and enjoy your life. God will get you where you're supposed to be, and he will help you change your attitude. So how's this for a good attitude? If you feel like you're uh, about to lose hope, faith, and patience, you've lost, and you're losing everything. Lord, nothing's going right. Can anyone, uh, can anyone understand what I'm saying? Have you had days like that lately? Nothing's going right, and you don't know what to do. Let me encourage you. In 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 1, 4, 8 through 9, Paul, the Bible says this, Paul was a man of great faith. And he says, listen to these words, we are hard pressed, we are troubled on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. All of us, beloved, have felt this pain. We have felt just like Paul did at one time or another. It says we are troubled in every side, yet we're not distressed. Being distressed, listen carefully, being distressed is when the stress and pressure on the outside gets on the inside. That's when you have to guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. It is possible to have stress come against you, 
but not distress, but you don't need to be distressed by it. We should be in a place with God. And I'm talking to mature believers here. We're all growing into that place. But we should be in a place where you're feeling stress and all these cares, the cares of the world are coming upon you. Speak the word. I cast my care on you, Jesus. I cast my care on you because you care for me. I am determined that this is going to be a good day. No matter how I feel, no matter what I think, no matter what that phone call was all about. I am choosing this day to have a good attitude. Beloved, it's all it's it's in on your it's in your ballpark. You're the one that has to do it. Nobody can do it for you. Perplexed is not being sure what to do. That's what Paul says. I'm perplexed. I never say that that's what that word means. You don't know what to do, but not in despair. You may not know what to do at this very second of your life. But that doesn't mean you have to despair about it. Give it to God and say, God, I'm not sure what you're up to here. I'm not sure of the timing here, but I'm leaving it with you. Does anyone get this today? Despair is is when you don't know. And you don't need to go into despair. Just go into rest. As I said at the beginning of this message, rest and trust God. And he'll bring it to pass. He will. He'll show you which way to turn. Ask God. He'll show you what to do. He'll show you how to speak the word and bring your attitude to a place of victory. Faith doesn't say, I never have any trouble. No. Faith says, trouble doesn't have me. Faith doesn't say, bad things never happen. It says, I'm going to win. Jesus is on my side when those bad things do happen. I will let this attitude be in me, which was in Christ Jesus. And I do this by faith. In 2 Timothy 3, it says, in the last days. How many of you know today we are in the last days? We are in the last of the last days. In the last days, there will be trouble. The enemy of your soul, named by the devil, is trying to defeat us and destroy us. He's doing everything he can to discourage the church of the living God. Well, I'll tell you, beloved, if God has to broadcast it throughout the United States of America and throughout the world, he did it yesterday. For those of you that watched that precious pastor that got released yesterday from, from, yes, and how did, God, how did God use that man? How did he use him? He laid hands on our president in the White House, laid hands on him and prayed for him. And it was beautiful that God would grant him a spirit of wisdom and, and give God a hand. All the other things, it was beautiful. So do you think the enemy was sitting there going... No, he said, I'll get them this way, I'll get them that way, I'll get them there. He's always out to destroy the church. But God has always had a remnant. He's trying to defeat you. He's trying to destroy you. It says in the latter days that some shall depart from the faith. Well, believe me, beloved, I've watched it over and over, especially this last few years. I've seen it. It's happening. Some... Some shall depart from the faith. Notice, some, not all. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. If you depart because of the troubles of these days, or if you know someone else that has, get on your knees and pray for them. Pray for them. Because all of us are going to have to learn through the Scripture how to handle stress and trouble, the ability to walk by faith. And let me tell you, you've heard it a thousand times from me, faith that worketh by love. You keep loving Jesus, and you keep telling yourself how much Jesus loves you. And let me tell you, your faith will operate, because you will know you serve a good God. I love that sign that they've got up here right now. 
Jesus loves you, and he, appro he approves this message. I love that. I've been sending that by text messages to people. It's the truth. Oh, hallelujah. So adjust your attitude to an altitude of faith, knowing that it worketh by love. As long as you keep love in your heart, you forgive those who have done you wrong, uh, those who have spoken bad about you, those who have accused you of wrongdoing, you just keep on, keep on loving God and love them to the best of your ability. And your faith will not fail you. There is no better way to get out of stress, to handle how to deal with people and, pro and problems than to believe God and obey God. You've got, you can't do this in your own. Has anyone discovered that? You can't do it in your own strength. Because when you think you're there, something else happens. Somebody else shows up as your heavenly sandpaper. I call them my special children. Hallelujah. But when you have to deal with people and problems, and you better know how to believe God. All things are possible to him that believeth. All things. In the last days, trouble will come, and faith will come. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the scripture says that he came, that we might have life, and we might have it more abundantly. If you're not living the abundant life as a Christian, something is wrong. Now, I'm not saying you get up every morning, oh, you've heard me say this before, I don't jump out of bed. Pastor Dave used to jump out of bed, not me. It takes me a while, and then I have to have my tea and all the rest of it. But our attitude when we wake up in the morning should be an attitude of gratitude for another day on God's earth that we can share the gospel. I'm not talking about taking your Bible and having your stickers all over the car. I'm talking about your lifestyle. Because in your workplace, beloved, they're watching. You might not think they're watching, but they're watching. So you see, it isn't your position that makes you happy. It isn't your position that makes you unhappy. It's your disposition. It's all in your attitude. The Bible tells us in Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, 6 and 7, it says this, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Oh, I don't know what, what it'll take to, to realize that. Oh, we're, oh, if I just had that thing, I'd be happy. If I just had that new home, I'd be happy. If I just had that car, I'd be happy. No. You'll always be striving for something to make you happy. And you have all you need inside of you if you are a believer. All you need. Think, the, the Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 6, think about all you can praise God for and be glad about it. Wow. Be glad about it. Listen to this. When Mother Teresa was asked what it took to work in the grimy streets of Calcutta, she replied, hard work and a joyful attitude. That was little Mother Teresa. Hard work and a joyful attitude. And she's right. And the second is harder to find than the first. You can get people that work really hard but need a, an attitude adjustment. So to be happy, you've got to learn. I've got to learn. We all have to learn how to rise above the if-onlys. If only I had more money. If only I had more talent. If only I was better looking. If only... Oh, thank you, Jesus. Money never made anybody more generous. If you won't give a dollar, you won't give a million if you have it. 
And money will not make you happy, you say, but it helps. Oh, I'm sure there's times it definitely helps. But it's going to pass away. And I'm, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, everyone should look to the future. You should have a little nest egg somewhere. And you should be very wise with your finances. The first thing you should do is give God his first. And then you'll, he'll make sure. Yes, give Jesus a big praise. He'll make sure when your time comes, you, he, will, he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed out begging bread. So do what's right with God first. Take care of your finances. Be wise. We don't have to run around with a credit card 24-7. I'm just saying, okay, I'm on my soapbox, so don't throw anything, okay? Anyway, it's not, money's not going to make you happy or even a lack of it. It's going to make you, you know, it, it doesn't matter. These things are going to pass away. What matters is, how is your relationships? I'm, I'm not saying these have to be perfect either, but do you work on them? Do you work on your relationship with your children, your grandchildren? Do you work on your relationships with your spouse? Do you work on them? Because a marriage has to be worked at. It doesn't just happen. As I said to you last week, but it's worth repeating for those that never heard it, I did not have the perfect marriage, but we sure did have the perfect moments. Wonderful memories, wonderful moments. I don't want to remember the times when we fought like cat and dog, but we did. You get two Scots stubborn people together, what do you want, really? It's going to happen. So I, I refuse to look at that stuff. I refuse, and I'm not putting Pastor Dave up on a pedestal. He'd, he'd come and he'd, sh he'd push himself off of it. But he was one of the best, and I know that. I'll be honest with you, I never appreciated him as much as I should have. I've never said that before, but it's the truth. You don't miss the water till the well runs dry. Believe me, you don't. So, Settle it once and for all. Things don't bring you joy, but a good attitude can. And I'm going to be finishing up in a few moments. The happiest people in this world are not the richest. The most beautiful are the most talented. No, they're not the richest. Instead of depending on externals, for your excitement, they, th these people enjoy the simple things in life. When you enjoy the simplicity of life, you're the happiest people in this world. You're not depending on how good looking you look today. And I know all of us ladies, we want our hair a certain way. I'm, <laughs> come on, I'm right there with you ladies. But that is so immaterial, truthfully. Contentment, godliness with contentment is much gain, great gain. So these people don't spend their time thinking that other pastures, pastures are greener further away. Let me tell you something. The grass just needs more watering. The water builds higher, that's all. You've got everything you need in your life today. If you've got your health and you've got your Savior, you've got everything everything. People that, that, that are happy and content, they savor the moment. They're glad to be alive. They're enjoying their work, their family, and the blessing of God that God has already given them. And whatever they, they, He continues to give them, that's just a bonus. That's just the, the candle with the, the, on the top of the cake. Because they have everything they need in the Holy Ghost. I can honestly say this. I've seen some hands go like that. It's the truth. I can honestly say this from this pulpit. Nothing in this world draws me. Nothing. Nothing. There's nothing I need. I have everything as long as I have my health. That's all I pray. Keep me strong till the end of my days and keep me healthy. 
because all the money in the world can't buy it. Are you hearing me? You say, well, Pastor, you get emotional. Yeah, if you'd had to live my life, you'd be emotional up here too, believe me. So these people, their eyes are always looking upward and outward. They're aware and they're compassionate. They're adaptable. They bend with the wind. Right, Pastor Sandy, Mrs. Flex? She's Mrs. Flex right there. <laughs> bend with the wind, adjust to change, enjoy the contest, the contest, test, the contests of life. All of the contests every day that you go through. And they try to walk in God's purpose. God's purpose for them, not somebody else. God's purpose for them as individuals. Paul was one of those people. That's why he could write letters filled with joy from the most miserable prisons in Europe while waiting to be executed. How come? You say, how could that happen? Because he realized that unlike the newspapers which is delivered to you every morning, joy is a, a, a garment. You have to put it on. You have to put it on. So have you got your joy on today? Have you got your joy? Because the joy of the Lord, beloved, is your strength. That's your strength. That's why the enemy always tries to take your joy. Always. Because he knows if he can get your joy, he can get your strength. And listen to this and I'm closing. At the end of the day, beloved, it's all about as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. When you sow a thought, you reap an act. When you sow an act, you reap a habit. When you sow a habit, you reap a character. When you sow a character, you reap a destiny. So remember, attitude may be a little thing, but it makes a big difference. Make yours a good attitude today. The choice is yours. God bless you. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Every head bowed and every eye closed, if you would. Thank you. Lord, we love you today. And we thank you today, Lord. We give you the praise today. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way in the hearts and the lives of these precious people, oh God. Have your way, Father, as we meditate on your goodness this day. We are so blessed. We are so blessed, Lord. We're so grateful. The most important thing I can say to you today is, are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? If you're seated in this auditorium today, and you may just have slipped in, I don't know, but God does. And you say to yourself, I need to get my life right with God. I need that joy you're talking about. I need that patience. I need to change. You can only do it through Christ that strengthens you, beloved. Only through Christ. So if that's anyone in this room, raise your hand telling me, I need that. Would you pray for me, Pastor? If there's anyone here that has never... Did I see a hand there, Pastor Sandy? Yes, I believe I did. Yes. Put it back down again. You've never received Jesus as your Savior. Yes. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's all of us together pray this prayer if we can. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Today, we receive him as our savior. We turn from our sins. We ask you to forgive us. And today, we make you our Lord. If you said that for the first time, beloved, please see one of the pastors at the back of the room. We have some literature for you. We we'll want you to start off right in the word of God. Can you say amen? Amen. Then let's stand to our feet this morning. God bless you.